Hello nerds and welcome to Go To There, 30 Rock Podcast, a weekly chronological journey through 30 Rock, looking at the jokes, the references, the highs, the lows, and all the blurbs that come with one of the best shows of the 21st century. As always, I'm your host, Curtis Stone, and joining me is... David Amick. And welcome to episode 137, season 7, episode 12, and 13, the final episodes of 30 Rock, entitled Hogcock and Last Lunch, originally airing January 31st, 2013. David, if you would, please give us a quick summary slash synopsis of these episodes. Now that TGS has officially ended, Liz is trying to be a stay-at-home mom, but quickly gets bored and immediately returns to 30 Rock to pitch new show ideas to to Kenneth, the new president of NBC. The end. (laughs) That's it. That's the show. (laughs) Bye. But he rejects all of her pitches for including too many of his no-no words, such as women, urban, niche, com- niche, niche. Complex, New York, writers, politics, politics, among others. Meanwhile, now that Jack has finally ascended to his dream role as CEO of Cable Town, he finds that everything's not all that it's cracked up to be. Even getting the pats on the back from his fellow elite, or uh, from his fellow executive class, doesn't bring quite the thrill that he thought it would, leading him to do some soul searching and make the decision of whether he actually wants to stay in the role. Meanwhile. Jenna is dismayed when she finds that now that she's no longer a working actor on the show, no one's paying attention to her. As she decides her next steps in life, she has to say goodbye to one of her most special and closest friends during her time at 30 Rock, her mirror. Aww. While Jenna navigates her loss, Ken finally finds something that Liz can work on at NBC. After discovering in Tracy's contract that if he films less than a certain number of episodes, NBC has to pay him $30 million dollars. Kenneth finds that he's one episode short and gets Liz to write one final episode of TGS. However, Tracy knows he's going to get the payout and tries to avoid filming the final episode, Although, it, even though it turns out that he doesn't want to let the series go for other reasons. So at the end, we say goodbye to 30 Rock and TGS in one grand send-off. Yay! And song. And song, yeah. Man, this is a... I mean, they, it's definitely one of those episodes... Um, there's a lot going on, um, and so a lot we, going on in the finale. I know, I know, in a shortened season, I know, but it's just like it's 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 similar to sort of how Parks and Rec sort of had to do their final episode where they just mash everything in to you know I guess well they did it thirty minutes right they or was that an hour um I can't quite remember I feel like it, it must have been an hour it must, it must have, been have been an hour, hour. Um, but let me check on that really but, quickly so. Uh, when we were watching this, I was like, okay, I sort of know the beats, but I com- I basically completely forgot the first half of this episode, because, like, it's so fast. Like, everything's moving so oh, quick. Oh, speaking of, right, the other thing, it be the, the, the theme of Last Lunch. So, because it's, right, la- right the, 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 that's, the, that's the main inner episode plot of the final episode, which I should yeah. probably say. Um, right, so as the final episode, it's time for the last lunch of the writer's room, and it turns out that it's Les's turn to pick. And he's prepared to make sure he gets to pick the last one. He really wants one of these guys. Um, but I mean, I did definitely enjoy the second half of this episode more than the first half, just because the first half has to set up so much and is just doing so much, is doing so much lifting that it's almost kind of, it's kind of hard to not keep track, but it's just, they throw so much at you that it's just like, okay, you gotta like get here, 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 here. Like the whole setup of like Liz being a stay at home mom is like five minutes. And then it's done. Like, that storyline's done. Like, I feel like that, like, at, do we see Chris after that? Like, that's, the, like, once he meets her in the park, like, his story's done, right? Yeah, I think that is the so last. So that wraps on him. Um, then we get, like, Jax is kind of, like, Jack's first half is, like, kind of the most important for him. And then he's kind of smattered throughout the second half. Like, it's just, there's so much going on that it's hard for everyone to get time, but they want to give time to everybody. So it's like, it's a slapdash finale, but not bad. It, it's it doesn't it doesn't affect the quality. I don't think. I, it's just it's so much. I mean, you're bringing back people from the past. Uh, you're wrapping up so many people's storylines that did get wrapped up last week, and you have to do a satisfying finale all in forty minutes. So it's just like there's so much going on that I would I forgive them for it being sort of thrown together as it is. Um, but it's just like the first half kind of suffers from being too much, but the second half I think sorts itself out and becomes like satisfactory oh. in the end. It sounds like 
I, well, I don't know if liked it, but at least didn't mind it more than you. Like, I mean, there was a lot of stuff, but it didn't feel too rushed. Um, I think probably at the end we'll talk about series finales in general and yeah. where it fits. I mean, overall, I've actually thought it was, it was strong, a strong yeah. finale because it wrapped up everything, but it still had inner episode plots that were kind of like basic one off, like, you know, could have been the whatever, like, you know, the, the lunch thing. I mean, obviously the last lunch could have been, but a lunch thing could have been, you know, the plot of any, mm-hmm. Any episode, you know, in the writer's room at some point. So I thought it, it did that in a good way of, of, of the larger, the larger closing up storylines in addition to inner episode arcs. Um, you look, I did look up Parks and Rec. So it was actually, Parks and Rec was the same thing. It was a two, like it was an hour finale that was two, two separate, two separate episodes. Aired, yeah. One. Yeah. What, what yeah. one, and although it was actually called One Last Ride Part One and Part Two. Mm-hmm. So they made it more cohesive, I guess, than, I mean, although I mean, although these are two separate episodes with two separate titles that don't use like a part one, part two, or to be continued structure or anything, like I mean, it does flow really seamlessly from yeah. the first half to the second half. So I guess like if you had to edit it to be in one thirty minute slot for syndication, there's a there's probably a way you could cut it that would work. But anyway, I think there is a bit where they ha- where because of syndication they do set up an outro. Like we'll get to it, we'll talk about it, but I, I but. Because I knew this was a 40 minute episode, I wasn't really paying too much of the time. Mm-hmm. But there's a moment where Tracy's like stalling for time, and then they bring up, you know, the Lauren Michaels producer credit. And then they say, they hold on that for a couple of seconds. And then Liz is like, no, stop that. And then they cuffed back. So it's like, it's inside this, the, 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 the hour episode, you know, it's, it's a, it's a joke about, you know, no, no, we're not cutting away early. But I, I, I'm going to check the time on that because I feel like that's where they would have to cut it yeah. for syndication and then pick up. And I'm sure they produced like a previously on 30 Rock that they do for, you know, when it's airing in syndication. We'll have to look at that. Yeah. Um, and I'll hold off any more discussion on other finales, including Parks and Rec yeah. till the end. But I will say, I mean, well, we didn't tell before, but I do think this was a far, far more successful series following yeah. that. But we can get into why and compare to other. We'll do that at the end of the episode. Yeah. Um. But anyway, yeah. So in regards to this episode, like I like I said, um, I, I do think actually it was it was really strong. Um, still, I mean, managed to keep a good amount of comedy in addition to like poignant moments. Like honestly, what I, I actually remembered quite a bit of what happened in these episodes, and what I remembered most is the scene where Liz basically says goodbye to Tracy, mm-hmm. just because like I remember thinking like a lot of that was like Tina Fey, like it was. I mean, it was acting, but almost wasn't. It was like like. I mean, it came across to me like it kind of transcended the scene into like Tina Fey saying like goodbye to Tracy Morgan, mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, honestly, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I just found that scene like extremely poignant because it's so like, I mean, it's so true to life, Absolutely. and which we can get into when we get in that yeah. scene. But I think honestly that 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 I remember a lot that scene probably like. I remembered the most, mm-hmm. or what it, the the most strongly, or whatever the best yeah. way to put it. I is. mean, I think it's it's definitely the most emotional and yeah. uh, arguably probably the most poignant scene throughout the entire Thirty Rock, and it comes at the end. Uh, but it is it's a great moment. It's a great scene, and I think I mean I definitely sympathize and like would make sentiments like that uh, going forward or in the past of just like yeah we'll say we'll do x but we probably won't just because life doesn't work out like a sitcom it doesn't not everything and then they, they do sort of turn it on its head. we'll get there like they, they, they turn they turn that on its head mm-hmm. but um i mean i think like what she's saying is absolutely 100 percent true it sounds mean and it sounds brutally honest but i mean sometimes you need that honesty to to be real but yeah uh so this is gonna probably be a little bit long of an episode than we normally do but it's our final episode so you know, what else you got going on? I don't know. Uh, any other thoughts before we hop in for the last time, for the last lunch? Let's blimpy in for the last um, lunch. You know, the good year of blimpy. All right, so our cold open is going to help set up most of the storylines. It's going to help set up Liz's new stay-at-home storyline and Jack and his new CEO storyline. Lemon Cross family, let's not be late. Janet, shoes and socks. Okay, let go of the comic book. I'm trying to get your jacket on. Chris, shoes and socks. <sighs> let's go, let's go. Oh, no, don't forget oh, these. Just because you hate them. All right. Have a good day. Have fun at home.
Any recommendations for the best place to buy a girl's bike on the Upper West Side? She's eight. I'm sorry, what's a girl's bike? Is that like a girl doctor? Go back to Saudi Arabia, Hitler. You're buying a bike but not a helmet? The head is where the child's brain is. Why don't you get educated, double Hitler? I was gonna buy a helmet. Helmets inhibit brain development. You might as well give your darling child vaccines, which studies show cause homosexuality. So what? My two-year-old is super gay, and we love him more than a straight child because he doesn't rape! Gentlemen, yesterday I moved Cable Town's customer service to a part of India that has no phones. We're now providing the same level of service to our subscribers at zero the cost. This is a Six Sigma wheel of domination. It's a motivational tool I used back at GE, and it will be replacing Cable Town's uh, kitten and spaghetti. Once this circle is completely filled in, we will be a perfect company. And then we'll be able to get even better trophy wives, half Asian ones. Ooh. He's expected on a commercial set of Jack Donaghy's on this. You can't go in there. I never told you this, but I once came up late at night looking for Jack, and you were in a wedding dress dancing with one of his suits. Mr. Donaghy will see you now. Stay at home lemon to what do I owe the pleasure? Did you already run out of things to do today? <sighs> what? No, you are. It's understandable. For the past seven years, you put out dozens of fires every day, not including the real ones Tracy would set. To keep away Frankensteins, which... As far as we know, work. My point is, you need the outlet. Without work, I have plenty of new outlets. I ran this morning for 30 minutes. Does that include dry heating? And wet, and sure, okay, I thought I'd have a job right now, but I don't need to work. What about money? You know TGS is only syndicated in Greece. We'll be fine. Chris has gone back to work. He has a degree in ethnomusicology from Wesleyan, so he's a receptionist in a dental office. And I didn't come here looking for something to do. I just thought I would check in on you because you are the emotionally fragile one. Hogcock, which is the combination of hogwash and poppycock. I'm just saying, if my mother told me that everything I had been raised to believe was a lie and then died, I'd be like, say what? Lemon, all Colleen said is that she wanted me to be happy, and obviously I am. Take a look at my new view. From up here, I can see the whole island. A city built on the religion of capitalism, and I am its high priest, looking down on the swinish multitude. And even those who hate me, the unwashed socialist horde, the Occupy Wall Streeters and the beard havers and the bicycle riders, even they must acknowledge me as a god. And this makes you happy? It should. You know, I'm reminded of something Yoda once said. Mm. Oh, dark times are these. So I think either it's become so mainstream that it's not like funny to parody anymore, or maybe it's just not like what it was. But like, I feel like the the opening scene of Liz like on the mommy blog or what mommy form or whatever she's commenting on is like very like of that era. Mm-hmm. Like, because I, I feel like, um. Like, I guess I haven't, obviously, personally, haven't experienced posting on, like, a, uh, being mommy, in a mommy yeah. blog or mommy form or whatever for obvious reasons. Um, but, like, for some reason, like, those, like, stereotypes definitely leaked out into the culture. Like, just, like, using the acronyms to talk about stuff and being, like, overzealous one way or another because, oh, like, being, extre- yeah, being extremely safe or, like, basically everything everything and nothing is wrong it's like well if you don't get a helmet then you're hitler but if you right. do get a helmet you're double hitler and right. also vaccines and, and why is it gotta be but, a girl's bike yeah like, they'll make you gay or also but gay is better than straight because can't rape people yeah and it's like, oh. so and it's just so funny because like i feel like that's honestly not an ex- even it, i mean it's satire but like i don't even feel it's like ex- an extreme exaggeration because yeah. i feel like that's the sort of thing that I don't know. I, I remember like yeah. hearing about a lot back then, and like, and I don't know if now that still exists. And it's oh, just so yeah. widespread that it's I, not funny to comment on anymore. Yeah, but like, I think I think most of us, have, like, if we are sort of part of like the internet discourse at this point, we've just sort of tuned it out, or at least like put on you know blinders to that. But I mean, like, if you go on any popular thread, it uh, like Reddit thread, thread it, a uh, thread it, yeah. Ooh. You know, acronyms and, and abbreviations. We gotta, we, we've got to save time. The world is dying. Um, or Facebook, like any any like major, you'll you'll see those stereotypes, and not necessarily from from women. You'll just see them from everybody. It'd be like, oh no, you have to do this, but if you do this, you're this, and it's just like it's exhausting because it's just like there's a variety of voices screaming at you or or talking to you about 
you know, like, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a big thing. It can be a small thread of like, hey, what's a good restaurant in your town? It's like, oh, no, you should go to this place. No, don't go to that place. That guy, that owner is a bad guy. Like, I mean, like, the, what's it, Roy Codis around us? Like, you know, he owns a lot of restaurants and a lot of businesses around us and people will support his business. But no, you should support him because he's a Republican and he said some horrible things about the governor. And it's just like, I just wanted to go somewhere to eat. Like, you know, it's like at some point the discourse kind of has to stop and you have to sort of like tune those out and lessen the volume on a lot of those. Cause it's just like, I don't yeah. know. Like, I mean, it's fine to be vocal and it's fine to, you know, share your opinion, but at some point you've got to like, mm-hmm. you can't do it all the time. Cause that's just exhausting. You can't be like that up in arms all the time. It can't be good for you mentally anyway to just be that. I don't know. Yeah, so I guess it's around this time though is when you it's really first quote unquote like yeah. normal people like regularly using internet because I feel like there was an inflection point where for a while I guess I mean I guess around this time when smartphones became extremely widespread mm-hmm. because I feel like for a while internet discussion boards and blogs like obviously like had there was a lot going on but it was more I don't know like it, it wasn't as mainstream yeah. like you know saying like 20 years saying you're on a message board like would sound strange now or you know now saying that you just you you comment on blogs or whatever just like everyone has a smartphone so everyone does it so this was around i guess part of the reason why it was right for parody then was because this was around the time that right just regular regular moms i guess who you know wouldn't necessarily have been spending much time on the internet were like finally like discussing and it turns out when you're discussing on the internet everyone ends up like yeah everyone else like I don't know, I feel like there's the classic thing of, of, you know, like, people, like, you know, hiding behind a keyboard so you can say whatever you want, but it's, like, a, we've seen in this... Plot point. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, which is true, but, like, it's still, we've seen, like, even, I mean, now with Facebook, like, people will just say whatever, and, and, and if, even if their name and photo is there, it's just, like, yeah. it's just everyone acts that way. Yeah, <laughs> they don't necessarily need an avatar and a yeah. username. They'll still be and say horrific things, and some people get in trouble for it, which... That idea, like, I'm kind of torn on because it's like you're saying it in your private time, so you're not reflecting of your company. I don't know. It's like when you see people like that are being filmed, and then uh, a lot of stuff like, especially around like 2019 and 2020, when you like, you know, you would see a video of someone uh, being racially prejudiced against someone. Like, I assume you saw the one that the lady in Central Park um, was going to call the cops on yes. the guy, and you know, they Twitter saw it shared it around found out who she was where she worked and like sort of quote unquote canceled her like part of me is like yeah she shouldn't be a bigot but at the same time does she need to lose her job over it mm, i'm kind of torn you know like I, I, i'm not i don't know like that's that's a discussion for another day it sure, sure is we you're sure. kind of veering off into yeah i don't know it's just stuff like that like the internet discourse is kind of like at some point you just have to step away from it and be like all right i'm, I'm done that's enough of this right now but Jack's not happy, even though he should be. Is he going to be happy by the end? He'll have to watch and find He'll out. Have to watch and find out. Yeah. So back from the opening, uh, Kenneth given a tour to other producers and executives to help fill out the NBC schedule, and we set up Tracy's storyline as well. So they're, I mean, they're specifically from like Japan because they're mm-hmm. trying to buy a format, a Japanese format or something, right? Yeah, I yeah. think they're trying to. Repurpose, uh, not repurpose, but like create a show based off a, a pre existing show, yeah. And Nakamura san, we at NBC would love to adapt your game show for American audiences, but we thought maybe contestants could win money instead of penis punches. Yo, Ken, I need you to do something for me. Ken! Dre, Ken can't do stuff for you anymore. He's president of the network now. So? He promised me he'd always be there for me no matter what. Sometimes things change. And yet you still say stupid stuff to me all the time and suck at carrying boxes. Hey, Kenneth. Just thought I'd come up and say hi to the new president of NBC. (laughs) Well, can I get you anything? Chickpeas, moonshine, turtle meat? I'm good. You know... I was with NBC for seven years, and even though right now I'm concentrating on being a mom... You've always had the body for it. At some point down the road, I do plan on getting back to work. Well, I hope it's with NBC, because we have hiring quotas. Okay, well, I actually think there might be a show in my life. You know, a woman writer living in New York. Oh, sorry. Woman, writer, New York. Those are all on my list of TV no-no words. 
See, I think audiences just want to laugh and forget about their problems when they watch TV. They don't want to watch some angry New York cranky pants. Make that face. Exactly. I want to make shows that people actually want to watch. Shows where a guy gets a drink thrown in his face and then he turns to his dog and says, don't even say it. <laughs> to his dog. Okay, well, I think TV can be successful without sacrificing quality. Mm. Oh, there it is. Okay, well, if that's what you want, maybe I shouldn't bring my ideas to NBC. I'll go to cable where you can swear and really take time to let moments land. Liz knows the system. She knows the business. But yeah, I mean, a lot of what they're saying is definitely, I mean, has stayed true for 50 years of what, arguably what, quote unquote, America wants on TV. They don't want anything too intellectual or too preachy or... So I'll slightly disagree and say that the sitcoms specifically, like, yes, like, CBS definitely had the, what they're referencing here is, like, I think the classic, like, CBS multicam sitcom. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, like, The Time Since Then has had a lot of breakout comedies on, especially on ABC, I'm thinking of all those family comedies, and I'm really some on, I mean, NBC too, um, that were not quite that basic. So, like... It was a, it's not so like I guess I agree and disagree because it's like obviously yes the CBS like sitcom is was like has been enduringly popular but at the same time it's like there has been some innovation that I you know I would give audiences I guess a little bit of credit for yeah. for you know I mean uh, yeah I guess it's I guess even like like How I Met Your Mother is probably for me the my favorite CBS sitcom because it does sort of break the mold uh, but it still what was, about Mom. Mom's okay, but I mean, it's still very formulaic. Yeah. Um, but like, How I Met Your Mother had a formula, but it wasn't afraid to sort of break it and at least be a little bit like inside joke and wink at the audience. Whereas like something like Everybody Loves Raymond or something like Big Bang Theory, like they just, it really seemed like fill in the blanks, Mad Lib style sitcom writing of just like oh they're gonna be in a situation we've seen a hundred times before but it's gonna be a little different because their personalities are different from the last people in these positions it's just like ugh but um i guess they're like looking at like something like a fox sitcom which they don't have that's many. true they i don't mean have many but um, well definitely not now but i mean back i mean back around this time there was like new girl mm-hmm. i feel like new girl kicked new off a wave of similar mindy the yeah. Mindy project yeah yeah, yeah. That was, I don't know. I guess edge. I mean, yeah, probably edgier is well is edgy good, by comparison. Yeah. Well, edgy, right. I mean, yes. Yeah. Obviously, compared to like a gritty, like whatever cable or streaming, like mm-hmm. sad com or dramedy or whatever. Like, yeah. but by by network standards, yeah. it, you know. But I feel like not to use one of Kenneth Nono's words, but a lot of those networks sort of carved out their niche, right? Like CBS was definitely like the very tried and true sitcom formula. Then you had Fox. It was a little bit had no problem sort of going a little bit quote unquote edgier and then you have NBC that sort of did sort of tried to juggle all of them but I think I think critically were more successful NBC was critically more successful oh, for sure yeah. uh, Fox was definitely like more appealing to like all and then CBS was very much just like crowd pleasing I feel like of yeah. the three networks like those those sort of is how I would classify their legacies uh which well, it'll be interesting to see in thirty years what we'll be saying about. I mean, they'll all just be one entity then. But, well, yeah, I would say who. Um, I mean, I don't know if looking uh... <laughs> back what their legacies will be. But speaking of Kenneth's no no words, we'll run it down real quick. Conflict, urban, woman, divorce, shows about shows, writers, Justin Bartha, dramedy, New York, politics, high concept, complex, niche, quality, edging. Sorry, not edging. Edgy. I definitely wouldn't be allowed on network television. No. Uh, blog and immoral characters, which obviously that's kind of, I mean, poking fun of itself. The, the last one is definitely funny because we all yeah. know that Kenneth is immortal or at least lives a very, very long time. Yeah. Or in other words, not not everything on that list describes 30 Rock, but many of those words do. Uh, <laughs> and have the ratings to match. Dramedy, Justin Bartha. Um, maybe Urban? I don't know. They would probably New York say they is... were. Well, New York's another word. Well, I'm saying New York is. I mean, New York is yeah. an urban place. So, yeah. so yeah. I mean, they kind of hit all those. Uh, Justin Martha didn't make a guest star appearance, but he oh. was mentioned, right? 
Did they make a new normal joke? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he wasn't mentioned by name. Anyway. Now they sort of hit all that checklist. Kenneth seems like he is doing a very good job in that role, despite only being in it, as we don't know the time has yeah. progressed in 30 Rock so it's, for as, a little it, while. I didn't think about this right now, but it's an interesting contrast, because in this episode, both Kenneth and Jack have achieved basically their dream position, and like Kenneth is actually thriving. It's like, clearly he loves it, like because of his love for television, like he loves being the president and like mm-hmm. developing shows. But we're at, and you know, he's not having an existential crisis, whereas Jack is. So yeah. it's kind of like, well, he's got lifetime and yeah. lifetime and lifetime That's of experience. True. But but I guess it, it contradicts. Like you, think you, you can't be something you aspire line. to your whole life, and then you get there, you still continue to thrive still, instead yeah. of being like, what do I do? Yeah. I guess because Jack really thought like to like if for Jack was like, this is the end, this is the goal that I want. Like this is when I get this, I, I means I've succeeded. Whereas Kent was like. I love this, and this is, you know what I mean? Because of that love, this is how I further. Right. So it's like, yeah, I guess Kenneth has a deep and abiding love, whereas Jack was Jack just like, just, just to wanted to get to the accomplishment. The, yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, in the writer's room, Jenna is sharing her exasperations at not being noticed anymore by not getting noticed anymore. <laughs> You will never believe what just happened to me. I was throwing a tantrum in the makeup room. Where is my color? I will have you pre-inspired. I will tell the other gays your real ages. I'll be ignored by my friends. No one paid any attention to stop ignoring me. This is an actor announcement. The show's over, so you're not technically an actor anymore. How dare you, you rotting pair. I will stop being an actress when the earth stops spinning on Kabbala Monster's fingernail. The only thing that's stopping is this show. It's beneath me. And from now on, Jenna Maroney only plays dramatic roles. Goodbye forever, you factory reject dildos. had to fight to get that line i mean dildo is like fine but i mean it's still prime time television it's the finale what are they gonna do cancel them that's true i but of her insults as she walks away that's my favorite yeah she has because it's, it's just, so random yeah yeah <laughs> i mean yeah i mean it it does make sense with jenna's character that she's no longer needed so she's no longer seen as a necessity so it's like why why bother giving her the attention that she's clearly craving mm-hmm um, so I think they handle the situation well, but I don't think she's going to handle it too well. We'll have to taste it. Jenna not handling, not getting attention well. Yeah. I don't believe it. Yeah. But that's, I feel like, I don't know, we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. I'll probably forget about it by the time it comes back around. Anyway. Uh, back at home, uh, despondent from not being able to still work on TV, Liz heads back to the message boards. <sighs> I'm a stay-at-home mom who, until recently, had a high-pressure job. Any advice on dealing with that transition? I put all my old work energy into parenting. My kids hate me, which gives me more parenting to do. Oh my god, I'm so sick of listening to stay-at-home moms whine. Try being a working parent. I did, but I got fired. For stupidity. I'd switch places with any of you, and I have amazing cheekbones. Original poster. For your information, some people like work. Really? You like having 40 emails from Jerry all with a red exclamation point. Oh, they're all urgent, Jerry? Some people think that work is fulfilling and validating. For example, the rapper T.I., who wrote, Better get on yo job, tell him haters get on yo job. Nougats. At least I think he was saying nougats. Well, I don't know what to say. I guess some people are idiots. Bitch, you are on my last nerve. Then why don't you do something about it? Gladly, friendo. Riverside Park, Hippo Playground, 10 minutes. Perfect. I take my darling children there all the time. I'll be the one wearing a purple sweater and wrapping a baby swing around some skank's neck. Why is Chris in the, I mean, spoiler alert, but why is Chris in a mommy's messaging board outside of, like, it, there's probably not a daddy messaging board, but... I mean, well, I mean, well, okay, so obviously we've had story arcs of Liz wanting kids, but in a way, Chris, like, I don't know, feels more maternal for some reason to me. Yeah. Like, I don't oh, know definitely. how to... Yeah. Yeah, I think emotionally he fits sort of the quote-unquote mommy role of being, like, more attentive than Liz. Yeah. And like you said, there's not really... Dad. I mean, they're probably, they're probably like stay-at-home dad boards, but I mean, for the purpose of like this plot line, like it, 
I mean, to me, it rings true with his character that he would be lurking and posting on those mommy blogs or whatever. So yeah. I, I was thinking, like I mean, plus, plus he's working at a receptionist at Vince's office, so it's like he probably has plenty of free time to like yeah. be on the computer. Well, and when just... he's not dealing with Jerry's urgent yeah, well, you know. There's lots of lots of dental emergencies going on. That's true. Yeah. I so, did like the I did, but I got fired for stupidity. <laughs> like, all right, I, mean, yeah. I guess that's honest. And the my kids hate me, so now I have more parenting to yeah. do. I, I wrapped myself up in my parenting, but my kids hate me for that, so I get to do more of it. It's like yikes. Uh, but Jack is starting his six sigma, eh, his personal six sigma wheel of happiness, which he got the idea after Kenneth sort of talked him into proving how happy he is. So now Jack has a task that he has to put off on himself to prove that he's happy. And still fit it into the corporate uh, structure the of corporate Six Sigma. Yeah. Yeah. So he, does, he you know, he, he deals with his family. He helps a homeless person get a job on, I assume, an NBC. Is that Good Morning America? That's Today Savannah, Show. Oh, it's the debate. That's Savannah Guthrie? Yes. Yeah, Yay, I know people. Um, you know, his daughter gives him a world's best dad mug, like, it's oh, and we get two uh, two really. I'd forgotten they came. Yeah, back, I actually so forgot that they that was a cameo in the finale. Um, but oh my god, Julie, Julianne uh, Moore and Salma. Hayek. I knew Salma. Come on, Nancy and um, uh, oh my god, uh, uh, Elisa. Elisa. Yeah, Elisa, yeah. Um, he convinces them into a three way. Uh, and also convince them to lose yeah. their accents, which is kind of a meh joke. But Thirty Rock invented liberal polygamy. Did they? I don't think that's true. Uh, no, but it was. But I mean, I would say like that sort of whole like the polyamory becoming more mainstream is of the past few years, but definitely not yet at uh, this time. So no, I don't think there's a sitcom that would show that yet, or if there is one running now that would show that. I'm trying to think. I don't I think, there's, think there's anything right now. I think there would be a show that would be that. Brave. I mean, not on network television for no, sure, but I, I don't... oh, definitely it's plenty of like. Um, Cable or streaming. Like, there must be a streaming show with, like, maybe a side character or a a character in a polyamorous relationship. Oh, I'm sure there's tons of Netflix shows that... I feel like there's a Netflix, but but it does feel like there would be a Netflix show or something coming that would take it head on at some point. Does sex education not do that? I feel like that would be absolutely... Oh, I bet bet Riverdale does it, right? uh, I don't know. Riverdale's probably got a polyamorous character. most of the first season of Riverdale. Sex education, I don't think so, because, I mean, it's about... Well, I mean, it's about... I would say it's about teenagers, not the teenagers, I guess, can't... Yeah. Well, oh, actually, just kidding. Uh, the HBO Max show Generation, which uh, is about, uh, well, I got comparisons to Euphoria because it like is about high school kids. It is like quote unquote edgy, but it's definitely much more comedic than Euphoria, which is like bleak and depressing. But I mean, a good show, but bleak and depressing. But anyway, one of the side plots in the second half of the first season of Generation is that um, two girls both like this guy, so they decide to like become a Thruple, I guess. So, oh, and right, right, never mind. Now that I'm thinking about it, right? It is a side plot on the politician too. Like Judith Slight's character is like the big subplot is that she's secretly in a thruple. So when she runs for governor or senator or whatever it is, like, is the secret gonna come out? <gasps> so anyway, so to retcon the first part of that, yes, it has been a plot on several shows, but not, not definitely not network and not mainstream yeah, yet. I'm, there probably has been a network show that's at least glanced talked about it but i don't think anything's been a consistent storyline so happy to be wrong hope that i'm wrong honestly about that but jenna's on set for her episode of law and order svu and she's trying to start the spinoff law and order colon mind beauty jenna thank you so much for doing this what a thrill oh i am just so glad to finally return to my two loves dramatic acting and sex crimes yeah well uh, this first scene is super simple. Uh, Munch and Finn find your body. Wait, what? I die? Didn't you get the rewrite? But if I'm dead, how can I become a recurring character? And if I'm not a recurring character, how will I get away with horrible stuff like this? Let's do this. That's what I was about to say. Let's do it. Slay it. And action. Word is clean lady found her. Oh. Early this morning. Oh. Well said, access. Ow, my foot hurts, but I- I'm okay. I think this injury has given me crime-solving powers. It's law and order, colon, mind beauty. I'm done. Who is this chick? All 
television is beneath me. I will only do cinema. No one cares, Jenna. I am going to the City of Angels, a veterinary hospital where I get dog sedatives that help me relax when I fly. Then I'm flying to Los Angeles. Goodbye forever, you soup line at a gay homeless shelter. I'm surprised she doesn't call it Los Angeles. It yeah, like, that's true. Like something she would pronounce that way. Yeah. Poor Jenna, she's still struggling to find her next steps. I'm amazed that director we've seen have several failed projects still getting work. So either he knows someone in the system or he's made something yeah. in this world that has made him a success that he can keep getting work. I mean, I feel like network procedural director is a pretty pretty good gig yeah, because there's so yeah. many of them. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's a couple other guest stars in Ice-T and I do not know that other actor. Richard, uh, Richard Belzer? Um, Richard Belzer, I think? No, Richard Esposito is the... Uh, stylist on 30 rock yeah richard belzer richard belzer has he i mean has he done any i'm sure he's done other work like is he a stage i feel like i haven't seen him uh, in anything else let's see but um but he's been on law and order for several decades yeah yeah he's he, apparently he oh oh no i'm sorry i was guessing sorry because he has some credits on snl and i was like wait a second but it was just it was just uh cameos. get cameos and guest roles yeah not uh <laughs> not as a not was, as a yeah so his big break was homicide life on the street where he played a detective which wow. obviously parlayed into law and order um i mean it looks like other than that he's done a lot of sitcom guest roles yeah including uh third rock in the sun arrested development mad about you That's right. um yeah and honestly since he let's see so he his last season on svu was in 2016 and he hasn't really done anything since then. So I guess he's retired. He's in his 70s, I think. So yeah. he's probably just retired from... Oh, yeah. He retired from acting in 2016. So there we go. He wrapped up a career. I do like her. When I, if I'm not famous, I'm not... Oh, wait. wait sorry. Fun fact. Henry Winkler is his cousin, apparently. Anyway. Hey, Fonzie. Uh, no, I like her. If I'm not a famous actress, I can't get away with keep doing things. Her Getting away is just slapping, I guess interns or just the pa uh, yeah yeah just slapping people but apparently that pa is used to it because munchin and ice tea just kept doing the same thing to him so. yeah also like ice tea has like not underrated but like he managed to make the transition from like music to acting like really seamlessly and then like mm-hmm. uh it just seems like yeah really successfully because i mean it seems like i don't know like it seems like when people transition like they're either like crazy like over heralded or just like clearly like not good at it and people talk about how they're not great at it but it's like he's good at it like he transitioned seamlessly and like now it's like he's just you know done law and order for many years and like it's it also doesn't seem like he's acting yeah like it just seems like he's just he's just iced tea being called by but it works yeah i guess well for i mean at least i mean not that i've never seen a ton of law and order but from what i've seen like it but works. To, in the back of my mind, every time that I hear Ice T is on SVU, even though it's a fictional show and it's not real, I'm reminded that in the early '90s he was in a band and they had a song called "Cop Killer," and it was all about you know racial injustice oh, right. and things. And yeah. it's just like, dude, 30 years later, you're playing a cop. Like I mean, well, it's just like I mean, he's not a real cop in real life. But now we're paying you hundreds of thousands of dollars an episode to follow your morals. But it's just like, come yeah, on, no. man. There's a part of me that's just like, well, I mean, you know, there. I can't remember. It was like one of the NWA, 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 NWA people like came like out against like all the Black Lives Matter yeah. and stuff. So I, I mean, Ice Cube? Was Ice it Ice Cube? I, I don't know. There, oh, was, wow. there was a weird thing like last year or earlier this year where Ice Cube's Twitter was really weird. It's like sending almost like mixed messages. Like one day mm-hmm. he'd say something that was like, oh, that's cool. And the next day he'd be like, dude. But he's another one, another one of those like, you know, Compton, you know, South LA rappers who came up out of the projects. Yeah. May have, you know, made a message of like, you know, down with Whitey and uh, and then now is sort of like a successful actor, sort of also sort of swallowed his morals and has seemingly been like mm, well, questionable. When you have yes. a lot of money you move in a certain right class and I'm sure that influences yeah, you sort of forget yeah. your past. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Anywho. Anyway. Oh we but, can't really speak to that, yeah. but you know. Only other thing that I wanna say is like, I mean what Jenna did. I mean, Jenna could have. Where's her Alexis Goodlooking spinoff? That would that would fit right into the Law and Order universe. She could solve. That's true. Crimes and such. I mean, is there is there a female led SV or Law and Order? SVU. Yeah, Mariska oh. Hargitay. Huh. Well, I thought it was her and what's his name. 
uh, Christopher Maloney. Well, it was. She, I mean, she's been on the show, the, I think, the entire run. He oh, okay. left. And he came and back. Came and came back. And, like, he came back and had a spinoff. So, oh. And I don't know. I guess he, I don't know if he's on the spinoff now. Anyway, he hasn't been on yeah. the whole time. So she's really been the face of it, especially the last you several years. Stuff. Yeah. And I also think the woman, Esapatha Merkerson, who played the DA on regular Law and Order. I mean, maybe not as much screen time, but, like, I think of her as definitely one of, like, the most memorable faces from it. So, but you're right. I mean, not, yeah, probably not a I mean, ton. Jenna's pitch is horrible, so yeah. it would never work, but she's trying, so good for her. Uh, meanwhile, in the park, it is go time. Christopher Rick Cross, are you kidding me? Liz, you don't want to be here right now, because I got to go smack that woman in the face. Chris, you're here to fight me. I'm the original poster. Oh my God, since when do you listen to T.I.? That message board is for moms. I thought you were a lady. You said you had amazing cheekbones. Mm. Cross, what are you doing here? I don't know. I just hate being at work. Sitting at a desk makes me crazy, so I keep getting up and getting coffee. Now I'm all jittery and weird. Bird! So you hate work. And this mom came in with her kids to see Dr. Emily, and I was jealous of her. Her kids were so bored, I just wanted to jump over that divider and play waiting games with them, like carpet adventure. Or that one where your hands are spiders. Hand spiders. Yeah, so I hate work, and evidently you miss it. I know. I'm a terrible mother. Oh, my God. If you were a dude, you would not even be thinking that. It's okay to want to work. One of us has to. We just got it backwards. You're the dad. I do like ignoring your questions while I try to watch TV. Exactly. I should be the one staying at home. You should be in an office. That's how our family's supposed to work. Except I don't have an office to go back to. So pitch something to Kenneth. Like, I don't know, a show about a dentist's office where the sassy hygienist says things like, I'm turning 30 again. <laughs> I will miss Tyrell. You know, that's exactly the kind of garbage that Kenneth is looking for. And for the sake of my family, I'm going to give it to him. Yay. I mean, I know there was a very popular sitcom called The Office, obviously, but it's like, it's true that, like, there's just, like, so much of that, like, I'm turning 30, and, like, there's just, like, office related stuff that, like, somehow endures, like, when everyone said, you know, like, the Happy Friday, Happy Monday, am I working hard or hard? You know what I mean? It's just like, there's, and it's like, people, I mean, I still encounter, like, that, people talking like that all the time, so it's just, like, become, like, this enduring thing that apparently, like, never gets old. Well, because, I mean, it is harmless. So it's like, you can't be mad at someone who says it. Yeah. Like, you can be like... Well, not, I mean, no, I'm no, not mad. No, it's just are. like... I'm not saying you are, but I mean, like... It, even though they're cliched and they're tropey, it's just like, yeah, well, I mean... Yeah, nope. no. Nope. But I guess my point was, like, nope. I could totally see, like, how that would be a successful, like, mm-hmm. multicam sitcom because there are enough people out there who, like, be like, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I, I mean... It, it, that it's sounds really like my one. office. Exactly. It's super relatable and, like, everyone... It's just harmless comedy or harmless it's not directed yeah. at anyone it's not mean it's not a mean joke so I mean, just yeah. broad appeal absolutely which the network i guess needs to succeed so it makes sense yeah. Yeah. Um, but i mean that's all you really need you need that one bread maker right like a friends and then that can help produce multiple other shows that may not match the same success but oh yeah as long as you've got that one thing that's making you money it gives you yeah. the ability to create other stuff that you otherwise couldn't do and that's all industries ever so Tracy's still trying to figure out what he's going to do. Not doing a great job because Kenneth still won't listen to him. And Jack calls Kenneth up to prove how happy he truly is. Wanted to see me, sir? Kenneth, since we last spoke, I've been in a spiral. An upward spiral. Oh, that's not a thing. Neither is talking two Catholic beauties into a delicious vanilla caramel sex swirl, but I did it. And I got rid of their accents. Oh, Jack, porking in that prison basement was wicked awesome. Oh, thank you, you two, for blowing my brains. So who's happy now, Parcel? Well, if you have to ask the question... And answer it. I am. You string cheese with a tooth stuck in it. Look at the wheel. Well, then smile, Mr. Donaghy. I am. Jack... You are going to love this, you magnificent bastard. Someone leaked your new salary. Occupy Wall Street is having a conniption. Really? They burned you in effigy. The hair went up like a Roman candle. And the Democrats, they don't even know what to do with themselves. Just look at this jackass. Jack Donaghy is an economic war criminal. If the Democratic Party controlled Congress, I would see to it that he was punished in the worst way possible by having to come down here and listen to us. God, I feel like I have a macro penis right now. all 
all that glitters is not gold. Also, I totally forgot that Nancy Pelosi was a guest star on this. Yeah. It's always, like, funny when, like, real-life politicians, like, guest on things. Because, I mean, I mean, I get... I, I guess like they're people too, and they can. But it just feels Politicians weird. Politicians are people too. Well, I mean, but you know what I mean. Like it feels weird to have some, you know, especially a hiring politician and come on and like play themselves mm-hmm. and like say something. Like it seems like it almost seems like there's something wrong with that. Even though I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just like doing a silly bit. Like yeah. it's not like it's anything that would be corrupt or whatever. Anyway, yeah. it just feels like a little weird. Oh, to I feel me. the exact same way whenever there's like a journalist. Like, anytime I see someone, like, from CNN, Fox, like, any news outlet is in, like, a movie, mm-hmm. I'm like, when did they have time to do that? <laughs> I, I, like, I don't know. I just, it's like, it's like, I mean, I mean, not to be like, you're taking jobs from actors, but it's like, <laughs> it, but it's like, it shows, I guess in the movie, it shows the severity that they have a quote unquote real right. news person delivering this news as opposed to just Joe mm-hmm. Schmuck. Well, who is not a real how about 30 rock has had lots and lots and lots of actual nbc news personalities well that's synergy that's oh, okay. that's cross promotion that's all we have svu on here it's gotcha because, you know if you didn't know about law and order svu it's also an nbc production that's true good point I don't know, there's just it, but i i i agree with yeah whenever a politician is on a tv show playing themselves and poking fun at themselves it's kind of like am i okay with this because it's just like is it levity or is it i don't know i it's it's a weird thing but i agree it is kind of odd whenever i see it so liz gets the word from kenneth that they must produce so now we actually know the episode count of tgs is 149 episodes they've only been in the seven years which would track because if you do 20 years 20 episodes a season yeah that track but it still is like so how many episodes were the end of the season one when this whole show started? Let's just... We, we're going to have to just let that go. We've we're talked enough know. about 30 Rock and right. Timelines over the yeah. course of the so show. She now knows that they have to produce one more. They have to make it to 150 episodes. Otherwise, Tracy Morgan... Or, sorry, Tracy Jordan gets a hundred. Uh, gets a $30 million payout. Which, if I'm Tracy, I would... I mean, he doesn't need the money. But yeah, I would be ducking out on that, too. He I mean, the money. Doesn't he have his, his, his multi-billion dollar porn video game or something? That yeah. hasn't been referenced in a while, but... No, but that was record-breaking. He, just he with that, he's set for life. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he and his family and his family's families are going to be good to go. So Liz now has roped back into producing one more episode of TGS. And she's begrudging about it. Uh, meanwhile... Jenna lands in Los Angeles and immediately turns it around. Welcome to Los Angeles International Airport. Follow yellow signs to baggage claim and ground transportation. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you need a wheelchair to baggage claim? Shut it down. I will return to my first love, Broadway. You Eastern European knockoff, Mr. Potato Heads. They sure are taking a lot of time to pack up. So, well, I guess we can talk about timelines one more time because Jenna seems to be doing all these different things. Meanwhile, true. the writers have just been packing up their stuff in the writers' room the entire time over the course well, of. Well, we know days. they're not exactly the most fastidious. They're pretty slow about. That's true. Uh, how they get things done. Um, but her her landing at LAX is definitely a more visual joke. Every single person there is hot, blonde, and yeah. young. Even the maintenance crew is yeah. looks um, like a, a model. Yeah. So that's and not going to work for Jenna. Outfits, you know, yeah. unbuttoned just enough so you see a little bit of cleavage. And I think the topper is the fact that there's... A, it's obviously, it's the actress that plays Sari playing the what are they called flight attendants or well she says can you, do you need a wheelchair to baggage claim so maybe just like an airport airport worker? yeah 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 that's the capper is she's even i mean jenna is in her 40s but still like not enough that she would need a wheelchair to baggage claim so no and it, but it is fun like to see the turn because she gets off she's got her sunglasses she's carrying the dog which that's out of style now, right? I think even in 2013, that was out of style. Yeah, I think like, it was like the Paris Hilton like era of like the little... Yeah. Carrying a puppy with you and her giant Starbucks latte, whatever. And then he was like, shut it down. 
She gets right. She's going to get right back on the plane, which definitely is not allowed. But also, like, I mean, a lot of planes just do fly back and forth. That's so, true. I mean, so, I mean, it's convenient. Yeah, I'm sure she. She's Jenna Maroney. She could get away with it, I guess. But she just turns right back around and heads back down the. Uh, what's that called? Terminal. Uh, jetway. Jetway. But Jet, runway, I guess. I don't know. No runway. Jetbridge. Jetbridge. Oh we, know, we know our airplane terminologies. Um, meanwhile, back at uh, Kenneth's office, which is still weird to say, Tracy confronts him about ignoring him for so many days now. Why haven't you come to see me? Why didn't you return any of my calls? I tried, sir, but no one answered. I'm Tracy Jordan. I don't answer phones. Kenneth, you once made a promise that you would always be there for me. I know. I'm sorry. I would never break a promise. Good, because I need you to do something for me. Of course. Just name it. Kenneth, I need you to take back your promise. Sir? I know what it is to blow up overnight, and I'm not talking about my gout. When I got big, a lot of people from my past wanted stuff for me. And well, I don't want to be that person for you. So like the snakes I kept in my dressing room, I release you. Mr. Jordan. Thank you, sir. I think I'm going to need a tissue. Am I supposed to drop this on the floor? And while we're naming things, my car ran out of gas on the Long Island Expressway. Yes, sir. How did he get to the office then? Well, Grizzin.com probably carried him, oh, right? That's true. <laughs> carried him like a little baby. No. Yeah, I don't know if I like that Kenneth sort of returning right back to being his... That's the joke. Boy, I don't know. It's just like... Because we, uh, when we see how aggressive he was... Well, not aggressive, but like how, you know, stalwart he was with like Liz, to see him immediately like return right back to being like an errand boy for Tracy is kind of like, you're, just, you're a president, dude. Like, I don't know. It just... But at the end of the day, he's still Kenneth, and he likes to please people uh, and help he, Tracy. Well, I think he likes to please men, not in a sexual way. Oh. Because he's not, he's not pleasing Liz. He's forcing her to do work she doesn't want to do anymore. That's true. And then as we're coming up on the climax of the first episode, uh, this hour-long episode, Liz and Jack have it out one last time about what their whole relationship revolves around. Okay, Jack, I need a job. I'm looking for six figures, eight if you're counting cents, which I fell for once before. Not cool. The gap. I'd love to help you, Lemon, but I don't think I can. I resigned as CEO of Cable Town an hour ago. What? Why? Because I felt nothing. I got the job. I pissed off my enemies. Pelosi, Maddow, Baldwin. Should have been the greatest moment of my life. No, 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 no. Eyes off the window. Focus on Lemon. What am I going to do now? I could try and help you make some calls and see what bridges I haven't burned, but I'm not going to, for your own good. Work is never going to make you happy, Lemon, and anyone who tells you differently is a fool. Are you kidding me? What have we been talking about for the last seven years? I don't know anymore. For the first time in my life, I don't know what I need. Maybe I'll buy a boat. Oh, my God. This whole time you've been telling me how to run my life, you didn't know what you were talking about. You're just an alcoholic with a great voice. Careful, Lemon, you're playing with fire. You made me buy into this whole life. When I met you, I was perfectly happy with what I had, eating night cheese and transitioning my pajamas into day wear. You're the one who told me to want more. And now, when I need you most, you are bailing on me? You're an adult, Lemon. You didn't have to listen to me. Really? When was that an option? Look, if you want someone to blame... Blame yourself. You're the one who wormed your way into my brain with your endless hand wringing and feelings. I used to be a shark, and then you unsharkulated me. I called you up here for one meeting seven years ago, and you kept coming up. So we ruined each other. Good to know. You know it's for the best that my show is over, and you've quit, and we're all going our separate ways. I guess you and I were just a boss and his employee, and now we're not anymore. Yes, that pretty much sums it up. There! You're no longer special to him. Get out. Get out of our lives. Yes! <laughs> Everybody that's sort of played a big role in Third Rock has sort of got a cameo in this episode. I mean, even 
uh, Elisa and Nancy. Come what back. about bird bones? Um, that's <laughs> no, I'm true. Not Vivi kidding. didn't come back. I'm but like seriously, not even one scene with Danny. Danny or a reference to Josh. Yeah, like it just—it yeah, which... seems like so weird that they're like really missed opportunities to not have them come back for like one bit. Like they could have just been in the background. I, actually, I'm gonna check. I mean, I doubt it, but when they do the big cast at the very end before Jenna sings her song, when they have all the cast and crew, I'm gonna look and see. I don't think they are. But I'm gonna see. Maybe they at least show up there. I don't. Think Otherwise, I it would it. be kind of like you yeah. couldn't even. Get, it does seem very on Thirty Rock that there's like not even a reference made. Yeah, so I wonder which, if behind the scenes yeah, there was something going on like, that they may just have like a rocky relationship, which yeah. is why he hasn't been on the show for so yeah. many times, and or it literally is just like he he just couldn't make it kind of thing. Like he was yeah. tied up with another production, whatever. But it's just like to bring back so many people and have so many references and not even mention either one of them is weird. Even though they did get Danny got a mention last episode, but yeah, just so weird about firing him. Yeah, well, to save I mean, money. I guess if he got fired last week. He wouldn't want to come back. That's but, true. Um, yeah. So in in that scene though, like I like I I don't think Liz is totally right that he doesn't know what he's talking about. It was more that he just got to it and didn't just didn't know how to feel anymore, as opposed to like not knowing. Yeah. And also, I mean, his whole thing of, like, you came up one time and stopped coming and then just never stopped coming. It's like, dude, we've seen multiple instances of you coming to her. So it's like, he's, yeah. he's being a little disingenuous on how their relationship actually worked. But he's a man. He can't ever admit that he's wrong. So. That's true. Yeah. Also, a fun meta joke about how he pissed off his adversaries, Pelosi, uh, Maddow, and Baldwin. Yeah. Winking. Wink, wink. hard at the audience. Yeah. Which he's done that. I think he made that joke a few times of making a Baldwin joke. At his expense, um, yeah. I would I would not peg him as I wouldn't say he's liberal, but more democratic leaning. Just because I mean, like you know, all the characters he played, I would even I would easily buy that he's more Republican in his. Yeah, no, but he, I mean, he's like famously like yeah, no, he's liberal. very outspoken. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like looking at him. I guess it's just definitely like judging someone by their appearance. I just like yeah. yeah. If you told me he was Republican, because there's well, how much of your opinion is clouded by like the Jack Donaghy character though? Because I mean that. Well, not, I mean, it's just other characters that he's played, and yeah. he's like an older generation, and it's easy to sort of put them all into that camp. You know, he's been around, he's been in Hollywood for 40, 50 years. Yeah. Wouldn't be off kilter to assume that he's Republican. But. Yeah. Also, at the, uh, when, at the beginning, when he's like speaking about being like empty, feeling empty, or whatever, it was like, eyes like eyes or like eyes off the window or whatever mm-hmm. like i don't know if that's a direct madman parallel but like it, basically one of the theories that was going to happen was that madman was again with don draper like jumping out of a building oh. because of the opening credits is like a man like oh. falling so i i don't know if it's an intentional madman parallel we'll definitely talk about it when we get to a later scene um because there's actually like very strong parallels between um mad men and the Mad Men finale and the 30 Rock finale, but we'll get to it. Because it's interesting, because it doesn't quite happen in the way that Liz says it, but yeah. there actually is, and but it's really interesting, and I, but we'll get to it when we get to that scene anyway. So getting back to... I just, I just <laughs> took that as a joke, that the fact he just always stares out the window, but I'm at this surface level. I'm I mean, that, that's probably it, part, so. I mean, that's probably part of the reference, yeah. too. Yeah, like because he's, in a hurry, if he's, he's like, doing a normal time, thing. But... I don't have time to do your yeah. stoicism. Let's just cut to the chase i need i need help so i think that's how i took it but that's an interesting theory too that he was contemplating suicide but i guess it does seem like also something in character for jack to do is kill himself when he's like i don't have any other i don't have anything else to do so i guess i'll just end it which is very anti-catholic you can't do that that's true it's bad um but and so i guess this is so we're 22 minutes of a 44 so this would be where the episode ends Mm -hmm. So this scene coming up, I guess, would be where the next episode, Last Lunch, kicks in. Because yeah. it's that plot line. Mm-hmm. So I guess, yeah. So welcome to Last Lunch. Uh, Liz has called all the writers back to help her produce one final episode of TGS. And now it's time to pick lunch. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming in on such short notice. I know some of you have already gotten other jobs. Not me. Anyway... We have been given a second chance to end this right on our terms. So, what are we going to order for our last free lunch? Nothing, thank you. Sorry, whose turn is it to choose lunch today? Who is? 
the picker. You picked last time, Liz, so alphabetically after lemon comes... Oh, no. <sighs> Blimpies. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. What? Solve this, Frank. Hello, Lemon. What are you doing here? I thought you quit. In the cushions of my couch, I found this customer loyalty card to a place called Blazer Bar, and I assume it's yours. Thank you. It's Manhattan's largest out-of-business women's blazer dump. Look, I didn't like the way we ended things yesterday. Yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm sorry we argued, but I'm not myself lately. I, I quit the job I worked my entire life to get, and now I feel adrift. No, we're not doing this. Today is the last TGS ever. The point is I'm going away, probably for a long time. I assume that's code for a billionaire soul-searching trip to Tan Penis Island. Have fun. We're at the end here, Lemon. We shouldn't hold grudges. For your information, most of Tan Penis Island was destroyed in Sting's house fire. So I guess, yeah, that's definitely hinting that you could easily read it as he's contemplating suicide because he's like, well, you shouldn't hold grudges. You never know what your last words might be kind of thing. Which, honestly, until you... This is just my ignorance. Until you mentioned that he's contemplating suicide, I wouldn't have picked up on it. I thought it was literally just him saying, like, I'm leaving. Even having seen the boat scene later where it's like... Well, that, because it, okay. it's very heavy-handed. Oh, okay. But, like, like all of this hinting, I never took it as, oh. I'm going to kill myself. It's just, I'm living, I'm going to leave. That's, I'm going to... So, good lord, in real life, I don't know if I would pick up on some signs that people might put out there. That's horrible. I need to do better. Oh, dear. But, I mean, like, so this, is, this is what I'm talking about, like, earlier, where I was saying, like, the first half is so frazzled. Because we've set up Jack's storyline. The the baby, uh, the, the working from home stuff is already gone. Chris's story is gone. We don't see him again, I don't believe. Um, the mm -hmm. only storyline that's carried through now is Jack trying to find a purpose. Kenneth's right. storyline is sort of over for the most part. Tracy's storyline is sort of stuck, kick-started, but it really kicks in here. Like, it's just like, there's not much that carries over that first episode, and there's so much in it that it's like okay now we're actually going to the final episode and we've got to start wrapping everything up so there's more room here to let some of these stories sort of breathe we're still carrying over jenna's but most of her stuff is kind of done but she also gets a new plot in this one so it's like there's a lot going on for a 13 episode series finale season so it's like i get it i'm not mad at it it's not bad but it's just like you but do you understand now what i was trying to say about how the first half is just kind of there's mm -hmm. so much going on that's like, true yeah it's like because like i mean even this blimpy's plot line could have been cut and could have been like you said could have been used countless well, other times that's why i like it though because but it, i like it because yeah. it, it reminds you of yeah what the series roots are sort of just being like a non sequitur plot line um, but it also does fit for the series um, but it's just like as much as we've got going on we now are adding an additional plot that sort of runs through it's, that has no weight to it really but Tracy is uh, sort of has, has fully planted himself in trying to prevent the final TGS episode from airing uh, and well from that from just from airing from even uh, from whatever existing. being produced yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Liz uh, sits him down to try and figure out why <laughs> What did you do to Al Roker to make him do that? Let's just say his wife is on the board of the Children's Hospital and they needed a celebrity to host their annual gala and I threatened to do it. Do you understand how selfish you're being? Our crew has been together for seven years and tonight is everyone's chance to say goodbye. So get up on that stage and cut the BS. But I promised Barbara Streisand I'd never stab her again. Jenna, you've been friends with Lemon for a long time. She and I had an argument. Yesterday. Really? Did this scream in your face? Did you pin her up against the wall? Were your shirts wet with rain? I mean, obviously, we've had disagreements before, but this feels different. After tonight, I feel like Lemon and I could go our separate ways and never see each other again. Is that crazy? Not really. You know, Liz, she can hold a grudge. She did want me to cancel Top Chef because Colicchio's lunch place changed the toppings on her favorite salad. And with people, forget about it. She's never stayed friends with an ex. When Conan dumped her, she dropped him forever. Hey, Liz. Come on, you can't pretend I don't exist. 
We dated for a year. We were going to lose our virginity to each other. Now I'll never lose it. And her friends? She'll cut people off for doing nothing. I'm afraid to even tell her that I Frenched her dad on New Year's. I don't know what to do. I've lost so much already. The past few months have been really hard. And now Lennon... Did the doctor that prescribes your antidepressants go to jail too? You see, I don't have that many people in my life. I spent Christmas alone in the Hamptons drinking scotch and throwing firecrackers at Billy Joel's dog. <laughs> I'm just in a really bad place, and I don't know how much more I can take. Ah! Oh, Daddy, please stop crying. <laughs> Poor Jenna. Poor Jenna. And her daddy issues. Yeah. I mean, that. I mean, I, in the last episode, they talked about how green screen looks so fake. Oof, that Conan scene is a little rough. Yeah. They clearly weren't on the same set. Yeah. So obviously, he had to be filmed probably before. Maybe it was a last minute joke or something. I don't know, but it looks rough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but on the level of people playing themselves, he, yeah, he's actually actually a pretty good uh, performance. Who, who would have thought a comedian could actually be a pretty good actor? Who knew? Well, you know. Yeah. Oh, and we hadn't mentioned before, but I, I guess this is kind of is a retread of like this storyline we've seen of like Jack finding his purpose. But I guess since it's the finale, it it doesn't feel I don't know, it doesn't feel the same this time, I guess, because it's like whatever he does now or whatever note he ends on here is gonna be like his lasting mm-hmm. I guess I guess, you know, as far as working with Thirty Rock, that's what he's gonna be doing. So it doesn't have the same like, oh, Jack is like trying to find his figure out his purpose or destiny yeah. again. Well it's a new purpose. Yeah. yeah. His his previous words the last seven years was to be CEO and he's attained that. So now it's like, well, now he's got to find a new purpose. So yeah, even though he's trying to find himself, he's finding himself from a completely different position. So yeah. it's kind of refreshing. Um, but it's also darker because there's tinges that he's possibly going to kill himself or end right. his life. You know, and that's his new goal is to kill himself. So uh, meanwhile, back in the writer's room, uh, Lutz is still taking a stand and <laughs> making sure Blimpy's at their last lunch. Um, guys, I know I don't know much what woman speak well officially the show was canceled two weeks ago so isn't this technically season eight which means we start over at the beginning of the alphabet so the new picker is me what no lots isn't first you changed your name to aardvark that's insane <laughs> <laughs> It's nice the female writer got to speak up. Hooray! Her first and only lines of the, show, the whole series. So. Good job. Representation. It matters. it matters. But that does throw in the whole thing. Did he then change his name after the fact that they said it was Last Lunch was Lutz? Because otherwise he wouldn't be next in line. So it must have been he changed it after the fact. But how could he have done it so quick? Or he could have changed it just in preparation and never told him he changed it so they still think his name was Lutz. So either way, he was covered. Hmm. Let's just let that one slide. Yeah, it's just one of those things you're not supposed to question. Uh, But now we set up Jenna's new plot line for this episode, which it's only a couple of scenes, but it's important for her character. So have you picked out a song for tonight, Ms. Maroney? A perfect song. As I'm sure you know, I have returned to my first love, Broadway, in a musical adaptation of the film, of the novel, The Rural Juror. I'm sorry, the what? At the end of Act Two, my character, Constance Justice, sings the title song. It's a tearful goodbye to her true love, Norman Blurde, The Rural Juror. It sounds emotional. Listen to this. What? What is that face? I don't know, Ms. Maroney. It just seems like you're faking it. Well, of course I am. I'm an actor, and acting is all cheap tricks that any child or monkey could do. To act drunk, you just wear two different size heels. And to cry, you just clutch a shard of broken glass. Ms. Maroney, this is the end of TGS. You need to show real emotion. Hmm. Real emotion? It's not really my thing. Maybe if I had something to be sad about. Are you kidding? After tonight, you may not see any of us ever again. Stop trying to cheer me up. I need to feel sad. Then I guess you'll have to figure out something that you'll miss about this place. But 
Maybe it's not a thing so much as a person. Well, that's not going to be easy, Kenneth, considering I'm the only person who works here. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, we know she's I mean, a severe narcissist. So. I mean, I know, but even so, like, what, what does she think everyone else is then? Her assistants? Robots? Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that line or her storyline about being emotional, if that's something that maybe her character has been criticized before in the past, of like she doesn't show actual real emotion and all it looks fake. So it feels like it's coming from a place of like criticism. But I don't know when it would ever stem from. Because I mean, I'm trying to think of an instance where she had had to be emotional about something and it never coming across as genuine. And I, well, I mean, I mean, her whole character is calculated and yeah. But I mean, reversed. like Thirty Rocks never had like a really deep storyline. That's true. Where she would have to be super emotional. That's so, true. I don't know, but wow. I mean, acting is <laughs> just a cheap trick any child or monkey could do. That is true. As we've noted how much you love child actors, especially recently. They do make appearances here, but don't do much acting in the finale. They just kind of sit there or stand there, so. That's true. I don't think they get a line. No, not this, not this one, no. That's good. But uh, Liz is hunting down Tracy as it's time to start the episode, at least start rehearsing. Uh, she turns to Grizzin.com to figure out where he may be. No. Come on, Trey, leave the dancers alone. What's going on? Why aren't you smiling bravely while Tracy tells you your butt looks like two slippery hams? <gasps> Where's Tracy? We have no idea, Liz. I've been so distracted lately. Grizz just found out his uncle left him a bed and breakfast outside Santa Fe. I'm going to be a real fish out of water. What are you talking about? What is that? Does everyone see that? Okay, whatever. I know you know where Tracy is. Did he promise you some of the $30 million? Yes, yes, he, he promised, promised me $20,000. Wait, what? Okay, that's it. Trey is exactly what you think he is, Liz. It's the closest thing he has to hiding out in a church. Com sells him out real quick when he learns he's not getting $80,000. Well, if you're getting, doc, say, if you're getting that much uh, less money, then... Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, not. I wouldn't say Dotcom deserves it, but we do know he's very outspoken, and he has no problem telling people when they're wrong, so... Grizz knows when to sort of just grin and bear it. So he's, already, he's maybe earned that extra 80000 Yeah. Also, sounds like a real sitcom plot that Grizz is about to embark on. Yeah, that was, that was a fun way, like, the other shows do, like, backdoor pilots. Like, that was a funny way of, like, setting up yeah. where Grizz could potentially go. And even so far as putting up a fake promo in the middle of the episode that only Liz can see. For Grizz and hers. For Grizz and hers. Set in Santa Fe at a restaurant. Or B&B. Was it right? I thought Bed and was... breakfast. Oh, well. Again, I don't pay attention. So Clearly. That's why you're here. Meanwhile, we get the the climax of the last lunch uh, fiasco. And, Lu- and Lutz sort of kind of tells it how it is for the last seven years, how he's been treated. Getting a lot of uh, catharsis right now. Five o'clock, where the frack is our lunch? We can't break him, Liz. He's not human. Why are you doing this to us? I'll tell you why. Because for seven years, you have yelled at me and turned the lights on me when I was in the bathroom and written on me while I was sleeping. Because I was Lutz. Dumb, old, uncool, part Inuit, bisexual, 51-year-old Lutz. Well, today, I am the picker. And I want you to feel what I've felt for the last seven years. Anger and disappointment and regret. And when that sandwich slides out of you in a week, look at it! Because that is Lux's revenge! Serene, for lunch today, I would like to pick Blimpies. Oh! Oh, no! Serene, sushi from Nobu 57, dessert from Make My Cake in Harlem. I'll be back, I hope. (laughs) Blimpies seems like a place Liz would enjoy. So I'm curious... Does Why it, is she so adamant against it? It must have it does it have a reputation because to me, like to me, it's just like it's just like another like Subway, Jimmy John, Jersey Mike's type yeah. place it where it's like, like lower sucks, rank, I guess. Maybe, I, don't, yeah. I don't think you hear Blunt. I mean, do you see Blunty's advertising? I feel like it's no, but it's like regional. Lower, I think it's more lower, like lower, lower, it, lower. I mean, I feel like I definitely associate with that area, like yeah. the northeast area of the country. It's probably just like less. But I mean, again, we've seen Liz eat at the popcorn factory, so like her standards are pretty low. I mean, maybe she's trying to make her staff happy, so. 
But yeah, it seems like yeah. Liz is a blimpy girl. Yeah. Also, there's a nice visual callback there. After she pushes Lutz into the room and closes the door, she mm-hmm. uses her old Women in Cable award that she got to yeah. knock off the door handle so he can't yeah. get out. Yeah. The last time we saw that was the... Uh, uh, oh, it was the one with the sa- Sandwich Day. I think is the name of the episode where they were. it was another flashback of her threatening to... No, 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 sorry. It was in Sandwich Day where she threatened Kenneth to get the sandwich. She said, you'll all have chins. And she she held it up to him to threaten him. Right? Yes. I'm not crazy. That's shit I remember. Okay, I believe you. Mm, I don't think you believe me. Anyway, back at Dark Sensations, Liz has found Tracy. Almost like the first episode all over again. <laughs> Yeah, you're not that young either. Get down, please. Give it up for Liz Lemon, everybody. The least molested person in here. I don't even get your play here. Trey, you're in breach now. You stay here, you don't get the money. If you think it's about the money, you're even dumber than I look. So you're just doing this for no reason at all? For the fun of ruining everyone's chance to say goodbye? Doing this because I don't want to say goodbye to everyone. Anybody who's ever left me in my life just left. My dad going to get a pack of smokes and never coming back. All those foster parents talking about adopting me and never did. I don't want tonight's show to happen because I don't know how to say goodbye, Liz Lemon. Now on stage, feast your eyes on the skank train. Oh boy, okay. Look, Trey, it's not goodbye forever. I've enjoyed working with you and I'm sure we'll get to do it again sometime. And we're all going to stay friends. I'm sorry, is that the white lady's way of saying I'm going out to get cigarettes? Because that goodbye was atrocious. Fine. Well, I guess there's a reason people don't say honest goodbyes. Because when stuff is coming to an end, people freak out and they act crazy. They pick fights and they pick blimpies. And I don't know what Pete's doing. So you lie to them. But if you want a hardcore truth goodbye... They know me. (sighs) We were forced to be friends because of work. And we're probably not going to hang out after this. Right, you'll say that you're going to invite me to your house and it's never going to happen. And I'll see on TV that it's your birthday and I'll forget to call. And working with you is hard. Tracy, you frustrated me and you wore me out. But because the human heart is not properly connected to the human brain, I love you and I'm going to miss you. But tonight might be it. Brutally honest. I like that. So you come to the show? We'll come back, out, out. But we're gonna watch this first. Ride the train, ladies. <laughs> ride the train. I just love how they can transition from a genuinely emotional moment to like ride the train. Well, it's sitco- it's network TV. You don't let moments land. That's true. You so just gotta keep on trucking. Keep on hop aboard the skin train. But no, that's that, that's arguably I think the best moment of this episode, and also the most poignant. Like yeah, we talked sure. about already, just because. It's a very true sentiment that a lot of people do say well, whenever they're leaving a job or something like that. Like, no, we'll see each other again. 90% of the people that actually say that are just saying it to be polite because you know, it's the thing you have to say. Yeah. Um, but it definitely is true. I mean, how often do you see the people that you say goodbye to again, you know, especially when you get older and yeah. more in a career, you know, you, you say that, but still, like, you yeah especially because so many work relationships are like friendships of proximity Mm -hmm. because you're i mean i mean it sounds like whatever i mean you're forced you are forced to be there because that by your job i mean not forced because like in a dangerous way but i mean that's literally what it is like you're spending lots of time in close quarters so it's like you effectively forge friendships out of yeah out of proximity that i mean in past jobs i've had like even the times like i mean i'm terrible i'm like the worst at keeping in touch anyway but it's like even the couple times mm-hmm. that like from old jobs where i have tight like it's been like maybe like one or two times to meet up or hang out right. afterwards and then like it just kind of then you just say facebook friends yeah and life gets in the way and it's just like you don't really yeah, think about I mean, it yeah, but that, no that's a good scene and i think i think that's my favorite part of the finale is just the truth the honesty that comes with that because i think what liz is saying is a, an evergreen mentality for a lot of people to have and i think it it should be shared and and sort of understood more than than a lot of uh, sentiments that get thrown around but i don't know it's the general status quo is no you just be polite but i think 
yeah. being brutally honest is also like fair yeah in some instances well, right because i mean part of it is maybe you even believe that time when you say let's we'll hang out and stuff like because you generally believe we'll do it but it's just life gets in the way routine gets in the way like you know yeah. so it's, it's it's not even that you're not even necessarily like just saying that to be nice it's like you maybe you even have that intention it just never it just doesn't happen because yeah. other stuff is going on and you know anyway anyway uh speaking of reflection jenna has one last reflection on her life and the last seven years she spent at tgs kenneth what are you doing brian williams needs a mirror on the floor of his bathroom i guess you want that if you have a glass toilet but the show's over after tonight, so what do you care? But my mirror... Oh, my God. It's all over. Am I crying? I have no way to see if I'm crying. Thank God. Last lunch. No, no lunch. Last lunch. No lunch. Cupcake sandwich. Cupcake sandwich. Cupcake oh, crap. sandwich. Crap. Motherhood has made me go soft. Lutz, the food is here. Come eat. Oh, God. Cover the food. Boy, please. Sari, you heard the man. Blimpies. So just as the final episode of TGS is about to hit the air, Liz starts to start to finally connect the dots. Mostly thanks to Pete. And was well, I guess we didn't even talk about Pete's sort of subplot in this about he's clearly trying to fake his death and, and start a new, a new life. Persona. Yeah. Um, where he's giving very not so subtle clues about Jack's also probably going to kill himself kind of thing. So Liz rushes off to figure out where he is and gets a video message. Oh no, 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 no. Don't worry, Lemon. There is no cause for alarm. You are watching my video suicide note. Oh my God. Try not to blame yourself. How were you to know that I was in such a dark place that the smallest thing, for example, a close friend's refusal to reconcile, would be the final straw? He killed himself because of me. This is like what happened with my gynecologist all over again. I do have a parting gift for you, Lemon. His phone. I can track his phone. Go to YouTube and search Hamlet the mini pig goes downstairs. Hamlet the mini pig. No, phone first. I'll watch the pig video in the cab. One minute. One minute to air. Guys, to be honest, you are nerds, and one of you is very funny. Goodbye forever. Goodbye, PDP. I will forget you. I sure hope so, Trey. I sure hope so. Tracy and Jenna, please set yourselves. Tracy, I'm really going to miss you. My baloney, in all honesty, I'm going out for cigarettes now. And I'll be home in 15 minutes. Tracy and Jenna, please set yourselves for the Hitler Hitlerson. My good side for camera. Tracy's accepted being brutally honest as well, even although he doesn't seem to understand. Wait, her. brutally honest or brutally dishonest? Well, no, because when he says to two for Frank, he's like, "I'm going to be honest. You guys are nerds, and one of you is funny." I feel like it's him yeah. being genuine, um, but not fully understanding what it means to be brutally honest, or that the ramifications that can come from being brutally honest. Yeah. Also, in the when Jenna says goodbye, like that's kind of another note of like Jane Krakowski, like mm -hmm. at, like coming through in the in the line reading where it's like genuine, like feels like genuine uh, the actor saying it, not just the character. Yeah, somehow there was this. I think that the last time they did a Black Hitler sketch, mm -hmm. there was a swastika on screen, and we made the comment like, does, does how, would that air in 
Germany. No, I definitely couldn't. It. No, but someone gave me an answer. It's like there's some there's some rule like you can show it in a, in a certain context. Oh. I think if like certain media, I'm trying to find it. So unconstitutional symbols like the swastika are allowed to be shown in movies and series in Germany because of the freedom of the arts. Hmm. So. I guess it's, that se- it's selective censorship. I guess yeah. like if you choose to not show it, you can. But I don't think there's a ruling that you can't or that you you're not allowed to show it. Kind of sense. Well, I mean, publicly, like you can't like have like a flag or something like that's definitely illegal. But it, yeah. Although video games aren't considered a form of art in Germany, interesting. So symbols like that were not allowed to be shown until 2018. Oh, okay. So how do they do a uh, Wolfenstein? Maybe censor. I guess so. Thank you, listener, for reaching out and helping us learn things about other cultures. But now we're coming up on the finale of the finale. Um, and this is going to be sort of an all-encompassing thing. Uh, but first we'll show uh, Jack's sort of Jack and Liz's reconciliation. And is he actually going to kill himself? Jack, wait! There's so much to live for! Don't you want to know how mad men ends? Oh! oh! Hello, Lemon. What? I thought you were going to kill yourself. That was the idea. It was extreme, but necessary. I didn't want to be just another person on your grudge list. Yeah, which reminds me, why am I still seeing new top chefs with that bald salad ruiner? I had ten hours to force you to confront the soul-crushing horror of a life without me. I didn't lie when I said I was going away. I'm off to discover what makes me happy. I have to find my bliss, which for once is not an acronym for beautiful ladies in short shorts. How long will you be gone? As long as it takes to figure out what's next. Although I've only been on this boat a minute, I've already realized two things about myself. One, I could totally be a professional boat model. And two, I do know one thing that has made me happy these last seven years. Lemon, there is a word, a once special word, that's been tragically co-opted by the romance industrial complex. And I would hate to use it here and have you think that I'm suggesting any kind of romantic sentiment, let alone an invitation to scale Bone Mountain. It's a word that comes to us by way of the old high German luba from the Latin lubere, meaning to be pleasing. So I'm going to use this word to describe how I feel about you in the way that our Anglo-Saxon forefathers would have used it in reference to, say, uh, a hot bowl of bear meat or your enemy's skull. Split. I love you too, Jack. God, I, I get the joke is you know Irish don't share emotions or whatever. That joke is so fucking drawn out. <laughs> I hate it. I hate that joke so much. It's but it's in like, character. No, I, it is. But it's just like it just kept going. It kept going. It's yeah. a joke that went on for. Way it does. Long. It does go on a little while. So it's like okay, wrap it up, bro. Wrap yeah. it up. Yeah. So in the end, Jack's not killing himself. He's just going off to have a journey. Um, and they finally say, I love you to each other. Hooray. Which is nice. In a non romantic sense. No, yep. no one's trying to climb Bone Mountain. So that's hooray. Nice. Yay. Yeah. All right. So give me your Mad Men Well, theories. so Mad Men spoilers here for sure because it's funny. So obviously this aired before mm-hmm. Mad Men ended. So no one knew how Mad Men was going to end yet. And what Liz says there, Don goes to work for Peggy, definitely uh, does not happen. <laughs> but um, what actually does happen i want to talk about because there's actually like a strong parallel between how basically don draper at the end of Mad Men and and jack at the end of 30 rocks it's really funny that like clearly like tina fey was like very into Mad Men and like weaved it in like references to it and obviously john han blah 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 um so it's kind of funny that she i mean not inadvertently but it's just it's coincidental how similar it ended up because in the end of Mad Men, um, a couple episodes before the series finale, so Don Draper works in an advertising agency. So a bigger, a bigger a- agency basically acquires the one he works for, um, a couple of episodes before the end. And he kind of has a Jack moment of, he's like, oh, like, you know, I'm here in this place and it's like, what am I doing? Like, nothing is like, I don't feel anything anymore. Like, this doesn't feel right. So he basically goes off on a journey um to he goes to california which is a reference to a t- like th- there was an episode earlier in the series where he went to california it was like so free and whatever so it's like he's going to discover himself so he goes out to california um and basically the way it ends is 
um, we see here. So with 30 Rock ends with Jack goes on his journey to the end. He comes back and basically is still himself in the end. The end of Mad Men is Don goes on the spiritual journey and the series ends with him like kind of like meditating on a mountaintop or whatever. And it's intercut with clips from the classic Coke commercial that I'd like to buy a world of Coke. So basically the implication is for all his like, I want to be free. Like in the end, Don is an ad man and he takes this whole like decidedly like non corporate thing of meditation and being in the wilderness and corporatizes it into a basically implies he created the Coke ad campaign. So in the end, it's like, they go on, you know, they become disillusioned, they go on a journey, and in the end, they can never get away from who right. they really are in business, and they still go back they to it. So brought back into it. Yeah, so I, didn't, I hadn't really thought about it until rewatching this, but it's, like, it's just really funny how how much, like, Tina Fey, like, ended up basically kind of doing a very similar way to the actual Mad Men finale, even though what Liz says here is very wrong. That doesn't happen at all. Like, Peggy well, is still, Peggy is still very successful, wants, but she... She really wanted that yeah. to happen. He goes <laughs> to work for her, and that'll show him. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, mean it, it does yeah. seem like it would fit both characters because I yeah. mean, if that's all they've known, especially as we know with Jack, like his whole life is corporate. To think that he would go out and find himself at this stage in his life would be kind of hard to believe, and that he finds it within thirty seconds of leaving and yeah. he's immediately turning right back around is also kind of funny because it's just like, yeah, they can't even again they can't let a moment land. It's got to immediately come yep. back into another job. Well, they only have three minutes left there. Four minutes left. They got to get they gotta, it going. They got to get it going. Um, but no, that is an interesting like parallel. Yeah. So uh, it looks like Liz really understood those characters uh, pretty well uh, yeah. for Mad Men. So kudos, Liz and Tina Fey. Kudos. Well, that's another show one day I'll watch. At least I, I started it. Just like The Wire. Yes. Uh, back at TGS, uh, the show is wrapped and they have one final performance. Thank you, America. That's our show. Not a lot of people watched it, but the joke's on you because we got paid anyway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jenna Maroney. The Irma Lerman Merman murder. Turn the birds were lurid, the whir and the purr of a twirling girl. She would the world, would demure. The insurers of law for valor, what your car and war. One fervent world of a turgid error. Royal Jura, Royal Jura. I will never forget you, Royal Jura. I'll all the ways be glad I met you, Royal Jura. This is just the start, Lemon. Imagine the insights months on this boat will yield. The next time you see me, I'll be a new man. Goodbye, Jack Donaghy. Good God, Lemon, I just figured it all out. I'm turning around. Clear dishwashers. What? Clear dishwasher so you can see what's going on inside it. Oh my god, yes! Do that! It's the best idea I've ever had. Thank God I took that boat trip. I will never forget you, Rochola. I'll always be glad I met you, Rochola. The best days of my flirm. Yeah, I thought I, I thought because I I'd kind of forgotten the Royal Juror song, and it, one of those weird YouTube recommendations just came up on like the front page one time. I was like, oh, I don't watch this. That's a really good. I mean, lyrically, it's empty. It's, it's a flirm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all like her pronouncing words funny, um, but there's like the moment when, like she it was she she sort she hits the um, the, I keep saying I've said climax multiple times. So yeah. I want to change a different word. Is it the bridge? I guess, or it would be the key change. Oh. Where she hits her key change, and like you can see like 
like the water welling up and stuff. And then they do like the interstitial of like her singing and then showing like a, just a couple of clips uh, from the past. It's like, oh, that's a nice for now. That's a nice touch. Because they could have just shown her continue singing. But just like those quick flashbacks were like, oh, that's nice memories of the seven years that we've watched yes. of these characters. The classic finale montage. I mean, it is a montage in definition, but it's like, I don't know, four clips, four short clips of like four characters' hearts. Yeah. Well, no, that's, yeah, that's true. But anyway. Well, I mean, it's definitely a montage, but it's a short one. Very, very brief. Um, but yeah, that's the. It's not quite over. Um, we have to see where they are now. Yeah, there's they're over the end credits, they do a one year later sort of flash forward where everybody mm-hmm. is, and it wraps up everybody's story. Like, we see Liz actually is now working on. The Grizz spinoff. Grizz and hers. Grizz and hers. She's she's the showrunner for that. Uh, Pete has made his escape to, I guess it's North Carolina. Yeah. Or maybe South Carolina. It just says Carolina Mutual. No, but right. He's wearing baby blue, like Tar Heel colors. So I'm assuming it's North Carolina. But Paula finds him, brings him back. Jenna runs on stage to accept her Emmy, but she steals Tony. Her, her, I'm sorry. To Broadway. Her, her Broadway, Tony. Uh, but it turns out it's for someone else. Um, she gets one last laugh as she flashes. Uh, Liz is reminded of Tracy's birthday and contacts him, but he can't talk because his dad actually did return with cigarettes. And Jack is still doing well at Cable Town and has a new second assistant in Sam, who, from the looks of it, he's going to bone. And finally, Kenneth is still president of NBC. Years later now. At least multiple generations later as we get... He gets the... He gets the pitch for 30 rock from her great granddaughter and then we learn that it was a show within a show i guess they're in now in the flying car future yeah very close um uh, but the whole snow globe bit with kenneth um sort of showing the show within a show was clearly a nod to saying that's where which speaking of finales is arguably i think the most hated yeah, say most infamous and yeah, well known, but not probably, for good reason. Better word, yeah, that it was all a, a dream of a, a child, um, which, I mean, as far as finale goes, it's kind of a big fuck you to your audience. But also, like, part of me is like, hell yeah, be brazen about it. Who cares? It's just a show. It doesn't really matter. Because I know there's a lot of people that get upset, like how Sopranos ended, and I'm sure people are gonna get upset how The Walking Dead ends when it ends this season. Anyway, anyway, but yes, that's a very yes, that's a right. Like you said, a nod to to you know, where, um, so I guess like we can talk a little bit about like series finales in general and where this falls in the pantheon. Like I feel like like I mean obviously like I I liked it. I thought it it did a very good job of being an episode of Thirty Rock and still telling it like closing off arcs and telling us what the characters were going to be doing like in a way that all made sense and was like organic to the show i feel like in the scheme of things that like i i don't hear people talk about it so i don't think it's necessarily considered like an all-time great series finale but definitely not uh, i mean it's not denigrated in the way that you just talked about saying elsewhere or i don't know what's another really infamous well like, one you dislike is parks and yeah Rant, well but... i mean that's one that i think is i i really dislike but i i think that is mixed like there are a lot of people who really like that because of the the way it is well of course the sopranos one is a, a, yeah. is 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 another one where it's like not i mean lots of people hate it but it's not universally hated it's it's just like extremely polarizing in a way even much more so than parks and rec yeah well i know one that um is definitely lauded as like people loved it or most people i think hated it at the time but as time gone on more people have come to know it as like understandable was the roseanne the original roseanne finale where Mm -hmm. she also produced it and it was all a book she had written and she had to change some of the characters and things like that, which um, I definitely know when it when it aired, people hated it because it's again, it's another like big fuck you to your audience who watched for nine seasons. Mm-hmm. But part of me again, that rebellious fear was like fuck yeah, play with the the common tropes and do something out of the box and do something different. I welcome that. I think it's fun because it is a TV show. You shouldn't take it that seriously, and the the creator just said yeah it was all a creation that i made up it makes sense so yeah i'm yeah. all for it i thought it was a great i thought it was a great finale but the, that last season sucked but that finale was super great and how she wrapped it up yeah i think i would say seinfeld and lost are probably two of the more um universally disliked finales. oh i thought seinfeld again 
hit it perfectly. I, I guess I that's mean, the, show, the whole show is yeah. about nothing, and that makes sense that that's the show keeps going. It's just these people. The whole show is about these people's lives, so it makes sense that that's where it continues is just them being selfish again. Yeah. That makes sense. Lost, though, I feel like Lost is definitely, like, universally reviled. Yeah. Um, I mean, that show lost a lot of traction multiple seasons in anyway. Yeah. Um, but the fact that it, people predicted sort of from the first season, oh, no, they were in purgatory, or they were dead all along, and they're in purgatory, and then that is what happens. So I think people just felt like, oh, we get, and the producers kept saying, no, that's not what it is. That's not, and they kept essentially lying to their audience. That's one thing. They're like, no, that's not what it is because we need you to keep watching. And then it turns out that's what it is. And so they watch for seven seasons to, yeah. be, to be proven right. It's kind of like, yeah, I could see it being upset about that too. Yeah, I'm just Googling. I'm seeing, well, Game of Thrones was, again, I'm seeing Game of Thrones, Quantum Leap, and Scrubs, the the NBC reboot. family popping up yeah. a lot. But not the ABC. Not the reboot. Not the, reboot the one, that, yeah, the one the before it went to ABC popping up a lot. So I haven't seen any of those. So, but... Um, specifically, I mean, I do want to, last time, well, it's the last episode, but last time I'll talk about the Parks and Rec, but the reason why, like, I mean, I'm sure I've gone into it, but the reason why I dislike the Parks and Rec is because 30 Rock does the thing of showing us where their character is going, but it's not stretched out, it's not the whole episode, like, you know, it didn't, that episode didn't feel like a episode of Parks and Rec, which, I mean, it's a finale, like, special episode doesn't necessarily have to, but it's just like, it just, it just felt like purely like, I don't know, like, it felt like pure fan service as this was an episode of 30 rock that was the finale that closed like it showed you what they were the characters were going like in a way that you know that was just a much better way to do it in my opinion so yeah, I mean, that's the that's really the reason why i just like the parks and rec finale so no much. i mean the parks and rec was definitely fan service but as joyful as that show has been and started and, and maintained throughout mm-hmm. its six seasons or seven seasons it that finale to me made sense like yes they all got exactly what they wanted because that show is all about joy and all about happiness and all about, you know, expressing, you know, a positive worldview, which may not always actually happen in the real world. But for that show, for that setting, to me, it made sense. So, like, I'm, I'm more like, yeah, that's good. it was a good finale. I, it made sense. But I could totally understand someone saying, like, no, it was too much fan service. It was too, it was too uh, saccharine that... I that it was turning that it turned them off. So yeah. I, I I see both sides, but I'm I'm all in the camp of yeah. Parks and Rec was a good finale, great finale. I'd argue a great finale for that world, but terrible, terrible. Finale. That's why we have opinions. <laughs> Everyone yeah. can be a little different. I'm trying to like I, I'm trying to think of like uh, off the top of my head like something like that was like a good series finale, and nothing's like like there, it's hard. I can to call to mind like shows. Excuse me. Like a list of like shows, you know, in general that I really like, but like in terms of specifically like remembering the finale, like, oh, I remember the girls finale. I actually like didn't like because I thought the next to last episode of girls should have been the finale because it was a perfect cap to the series. Basically, the, the next to last episode wrapped up all the characters except for the Lena Dunn character, Hannah. And like the last episode was basically. Wh- 30 minutes to like wrap up her character so it's like it felt a little indulgent to me so it's like if it would have ended with the one before that like it it, so that's one where another one that i wasn't like super crazy about yeah um well i guess actually nathan for you had an amazing finale that was the finding francis um like kind of like super sized movie length episode that kind of calls back to a lot of the previous episodes and when that was actually a really a really well done one in keeping keeping in the style of the show and making references, but still, like, I don't know, just, like, f- feeling like a send-off, because it felt like a bigger... Like, it was definitely still the Nathan for You spirit, but it was, it was, um... I don't know, it felt grander in a way that, like, made sense for a finale. Um, yeah, I think it's... A shorter list would be positively memorable finales, because yeah. I feel like finales are such a hard thing to really land and stick, that there's fewer that are actually member, that <laughs> membered that are remembered for being really good Mm -hmm. because it's just so much easier to have your expectations so high and never actually the show meeting them so yeah oh the veep finale was Mm. good it i mean good in like that it was like 
depressing like it was like it was it was still like the same like satire but like it would like basically went into like a bleak like nihilistic like everything is terrible and like it, it was definitely fitting with the way of the show but it was still like it, it was like it was good but it was like a little just like almost like too too real too real or yeah i mean well not it didn't seem too real at the time given actually given everything that's happened since then like and retrospectively a little too real at the time it was like in keeping but like yeah. it was and it was good because of that but it was like still like a little like <laughs> rough just because like oh god this is a little too bleak like not bleak in like a but like not like it was bleak in a comedic way but it was still like just like yeah it was just like a nihilistic i guess that's why i was yeah. um sorry i'm just like looking through like old like list of tv shows mm-hmm. to think of any other finale Mary, I, I think i think a lot of people a lot of critics really look to older shows and herald them as memorable yeah finales like i know the mary tyler moore has arguably a pretty well praised finale and it was it was a really really emotional finale uh really well done the golden girls has a really strong finale um but i'm, I'm trying to think like modern series that have like a strong reception for their finales positive reception for them now i feel like it's very few and far between yeah because like i'm trying to think of like you know bigger you know shows like broad city crazy ex-girlfriend fleabag silicon valley like those are all shows that were like well like you know as a whole they're good shows but it's like i don't really remember anything much about the finale so it's like it's hard for me to say like they had good the you know, like, there were great a couple finales. good moments in the broad city finale but it still felt like they didn't know what they were going to do because i feel like they yeah. they were setting up they were going to go their separate ways and it kind of felt like this where it's like yeah we're going to say goodbye we'll hang out but we probably won't but in the end it felt like they were still going to stick around together so like i didn't yeah i kind of got I, I i probably need to go back through that yeah. oh good place the good place did have a good series uh, finale now that i, I think about it that. it think, that yeah. was another one that it, it it another thing of like basically giving off a good closing like letting you know where mm-hmm. things were going at the same time like felt like as a it, yeah. it really felt in keeping with the spirit well, think, of the show i think that's one of those shows like it was meant to only run three or four seasons so mm-hmm. they they had a yeah a, a storyboard the entire time it's there's like i guess the office is probably one of the more um not lauded for its finale but lauded that it went on for too long mm-hmm. um its reputation dwindled i think as a result because there was a perfect finale when Michael Loft. That's where you should have ended that show, but you kept going for three more seasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's. I mean, it's. Just, I think finales are super hard to hit because you have so right. much expectation and so yeah. much desire for people that have invested in your show that you're not going to please everybody. So you probably the easiest thing is probably just do broad, but that's still super hard to nail. Yeah. Without betraying your characters or your stories. So, yeah. I don't ever want to be in that position. So, I don't. <laughs> it's tough. It. Yeah. You yeah. have a lot of expectations. It's like, yeah. Especially when you do anything with romance, because if you don't match the right people up with the fans and what their head cannons and their ships are, you're going to have a big backlash. Yeah. Well, that, right. That's even worse when there's dedicated, yeah. like, really dedicated fandoms, like that sort of thing. Because it's, just, yeah. I mean, then, I mean, then you're going to piss off a sizable group of people no matter what happens. So, yeah. But I guess that's why they get paid the big bucks. I mean, yeah, the best thing to do is just stay ignorant of all that, but it's probably yeah. hard to do, honestly. Yeah. But, yeah. But that's 30 Rock. That's the end of 30 Rock. Aww. That's sad. Two, two and a half years, right? We started end of, uh... and we started 2019, right? We recorded the New Year's Eve 2018, and I had it go up New Year's Day oh, in yeah. 2019. Oh, two and a half years, man. Thanks for the last two and a half years. Well, when we started, we were very close roommates. And now we're married. So. Yay. Damn, that was a lot in two years. Yeah. A lot's happened. <laughs> Marriage, house, the pandemic. Uh, uh, quarantine. Yeah. Working from home. Second quarantine. <laughs> oh, man. I, I mean... Not to get too personal or spend too much time on it, but I, I even when I was going to pitch the idea, because I think I only pitched it to you about a week, a week and a half before we recorded. Maybe it was longer. Maybe there was a, a longer. It was a little time. bit longer because you, you, you had mentioned, I, I think, a few months before, like yeah. that you like hadn't. You just wanted to to do it to do you know for fun yeah. just to and do then, that. Yeah, but I remember when I pitched it to you I, in my head, I was like, "He's going to do that." No, thank you. And I'll be like, "Okay, I tried." But no, you you uh, you wanted to do it, and I'm thankful. So I want to thank my co-host David. Thank you very much for 
for indulging me the last two and a half years yeah. in doing all of this. Well, I mean, it um, kind of has been fun to have, because I mean, obviously they're like TV shows we watch together and we talk about them, mm-hmm. but it's kind of, it was kind of fun to have like dedicated, okay, we're going to watch something and then like mm-hmm. talk about it in a, I mean, a slightly more structured, not like we did like, uh, <laughs> frankly, tons of like beforehand research and oh, like, yeah. you know, outlining and structuring, yeah. but you know, a I little tried. bit more of just like, yeah. I, at the beginning, I did try to do as much research as possible, but it just, as we well, said, with the you know, life hey, gets in the way. We're doing, we've been do, we're doing it mostly for fun, Absolutely. not for yeah, uh, no anything other than that. There's so. no monetary well. incentive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> although I will I say, although I think we've been surprised, like how many more down, like how many downloads we've had, which I mean, yeah. is not, not an extreme amount, but um no not 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 quite enough to get advertisements but no, still but like I mean, surprising it much more we than we would have we don't yeah you know the most posts i'm doing is on a reddit thread or yeah on instagram the fact that we have as many listeners and downloads that we have is remarkable so i want to say yeah. thank you to everyone yeah. that's that's uh followed us and, and and listened and gave us feedback and everything it's super grateful it's amazing um considering we again just started this because we both watched this show several years ago and one of the spend an hour a week talking about it so yeah and i'm super i mean this is more self-indulgence but i'm super proud because this is the first podcast i've actually actually have a finale to because there's <laughs> plenty that i've started in the past that you know because of what we were talking about was yeah. never going to have an ending um, but this is the one that i've actually been able to wrap and and have a full beginning middle and end to so I'm very proud of myself in that. So. <laughs> Good job. You've completed Yay. a project. I did a thing. Yeah. But a project that took two and a half years to do. And, yeah. and I'm also amazed that... I'm going to stop praising us and all that. But, I mean, we only missed, I think, collectively about a month. We, there was rarely a time where we didn't have an episode go up. And if it was, it was really just an extenuating circumstances. There was nothing we could control. Like, we yeah. were out of town or just a technical issue. But otherwise... We rarely missed a week, which was mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, for you're talking over the course of that amount of time, like it's yeah, didn't miss too many, so that yeah. was but yeah, good. <laughs> so thank you again. Uh, we uh, we went really long on this, and so we apologize. Uh, but what is the finale? It is the finale with an hour long episode. We got a lot to talk yeah. about. So uh, thank you as always for joining us on Go to There. If you like what we're doing, rating, reviewing, all that fun stuff, it's going to be the best way to help us out. If we it will matters. See, <laughs> we will not see you next week. Um, yeah. Um, Although, well, we'll see. We're, we'll pitch some ideas. And we'll see. see. Well, we we may. Uh, we're definitely not going to come back like <laughs> next week or no, like right away. But right, um, maybe you know, keep a uh, keep keep, uh, keep, keep subscribing. subscribing to the feed, I guess, and we'll see what happens down the yeah. pike. Yeah, we'll, down the pipe. Down the pike. Down the pipeline. Pipeline. Yeah. Down the pike. I don't think it's right. Anyway, uh, David, take us out for the final time of Thirty Rock. See you next time. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the question mark means there's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm a lerman, merman, murder. Turn the birds word lurid, the whir and the purr of a twirly girl. She would the world word demure. The insurer's a law for valor, up your car and war. One fervent world of a turgid error. Goodbye forever, you factory reject dildos.